Well, hi there, everybody. Welcome to Stress Free Lunch. I'm your host, Bill Whittle, and we're back again on uh, 30th of January, 2020. Still no jetpacks. I'm looking on a daily basis. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. It's good to be here. And um, we're going to take some questions, and we're going to provide some... Well, I almost said entertainment, but that's sure, certainly not what I was uh, aiming for. Um... Uh, we'll find a way to, to knock off an hour or two anyway. We could definitely do that. And I am looking for one thing here that I should have, but I don't see. Imagine my surprise. Um, anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. It's good to be here. And uh, and uh, let's see, in terms of just the general uh, generalities of it, um, I am getting... Uh, I am getting closer on these um, on these videos. I'm still working on uh, the Cold War, but I'm almost done with that. I'm just wrapping up number eleven. I've got one more to go. The um, the uh, like a cut down of the first episode uh, has already gone up. I'll put a link up for that tomorrow, and the first one opens tomorrow. So uh, finally, get a chance to hear all of this uh, all of this stuff. It took up uh, so much time. Um, let's see, what was I going to say about that? Oh gosh, I'm really in um, kind of a kind of a skittish mood today. Oh, somebody's been asking me to turn the volume up. Hopefully, that's a little better uh, than it was before. Um, but anyway, uh, one more uh, one more week of writing to go on that, and we should be um, should be done. So. Uh, you know, we'll see. <clears throat> it is a lot of history. But the first one, <coughs> excuse me, first one opens tomorrow. So that um, that's going to be great, and I'm looking forward to that in a big way. And especially looking forward to getting people's uh, opinions and feedback on it. I've um, been at it for, <clears throat> for a long time. So uh, that's about it. Um, let me see. Oh, and, uh, in the, in the scattered minutes I have usually between, um, being able to, um, take a break from the shows and the writing and everything, uh, I'm getting, things are getting closer on those animated movie things that I've been talking about for two years now, so, uh, still have to learn everything pretty much myself, but it's, it's actually starting to come together and every day we make a little more progress, so hopefully we'll have some of that to show in the near future. Um, and that's really about it, I guess. Uh, I think we'll probably just go to the, to the questions and, um, and see what's going on. Uh, I'm going out with my uh, beautiful wife, hello, sweetheart, who texted me just before we started with good luck, and that's a nice way to start your show, I can tell you. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll see what's going on in the comment section and in the questions section, and then, um, we will, uh, see what kind of exciting news we can come up with. Yeah, this kid's obviously a little little scattered today, but that's certainly not the first time. Uh, let's see what we got here. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. I like that thumbnail a lot. I think it was fun for uh, Joe Biden. Come on. Um, it's been, you know, this thing goes on like it, like, you know, this, this, uh, impeachment thing just goes on and on like I always thought it would. Um, and, uh, you know, what do you say? It's just, it's just plain awful. All right. So, um, let's see. Can you handle all of the excitement? Uh. Okay, so we'll do them just in order, and we'll 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 you know we'll kind of round the park kind of thing for today. Uh, so let's start where uh, we can all agree uh, is the greatest place to start. That's with uh, top fan Eric Blake, who apparently is feeling better. I uh, was in a nasty accident of some kind. I heard, and um, glad to see you're back, Eric. So uh, here we go. Um, Eric says, "Hey, Bill, here's something I really that." that I'd say really needs cleaning up. You recently, you recently said that the creator of a fictional universe, in this case George Lucas, should determine canon. Canon is um, 
is what's considered to be real in, in, the, in the fictional universe of that. So if I say that um, uh, Mr. Spock is um, gay, then nobody cares. But if, if a movie comes out that says he is, then he is, because he's a product of that fictional universe. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but that's basically why uh, canon is so important. You've got all these people feeling, all these people involved in the same kind of fandom, and somebody's got to be the referee, and the referee is the people that puts out the product, generally speaking. So anyway, uh, he says, here's the thing. According to George Lucas, Han let Greedo shoot first, and if you don't like that, you're advocating Han killing in cold blood. You made this subject one of your best videos, of course. Also calling out Lucas for his Viet Cong interpretation of the Ewoks. Meanwhile, lest we forget, J.J. Abrams is on our side of the argument saying, if Han shot first, why do you ask? So my question is, where does one draw the line with the creator determining canon, or do you now feel Greedo shooting first is the price we have to pay? And that p specific question is a little much in the weeds, but um, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on Star Wars tonight because I know we've been kind of up and down that road just way too often lately. Um, but it is an interesting question, and it is uh, a question that has political consequences. I have watched over the last several months, I've watched people who are commenting on Star Wars and Doctor Who, and they, they used to be saying things like, you know, we're tired of your, um, of your social justice warrior uh, left-wing agenda, and we're tired of this and that. Now they're saying, oh, so it's another chance to beat up on Donald Trump, huh? That's just continuing to build. Uh, they they just the 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 more the left does it, uh, the the more of of the people that we recruit. Now I'm I'm going to upload tomorrow as well, uh, or maybe tonight before I go. Uh, a speech I gave down in Ramona last week, and it was the first time I've really hit this subject as clearly as I as I did. But I think this goes to the entire point. And again, this is not Star Wars so much as it's uh, politics. So hang on here. What, what, I've, what I've come to believe lately is that, uh, is that the culture war is over and uh, we win. Uh, let me just adjust this real quick. And the reason I say we win is because everything, all of the weapons that the left has, has had are either gone or or rapidly, rapidly uh, decaying. Pretty simple. Uh, let's start with um, the news media. They used to be able to tell the country what was real and what wasn't real because they um, controlled the access to information. So if uh, Walter Cronkite says that the war in Vietnam is lost, then it's lost. And, and they had the entire means of communication and they had it for 35 or 40 years. They don't have it now. Um, not only is there an alternative in form of the internet, but the credibility of the news uh, agencies is now down near zero. And as I said before, people think that CNN um, sells news, but they don't. They sell credibility. And so does the New York Times and all of it. You can get your news from anybody. The whole point of, of CNN or, um, or the Times is that you, you used to believe that if it came from the New York Times, then, then if it's not got to be true, then certainly it's more likely than, you know, the ravings of a guy walking down the street talking to himself. But now I'd much rather trust that guy walking down the street than, than what I hear from CNN. Um, so, um, so there's that. Uh, then the other uh, series of weapons they have, they've had the pop culture, which means movie stars mostly, TV stars. We saw Ricky Gervais just eviscerate them, mock them to their face, and much more importantly than that, when NBC put up this, um, this video, six or seven million views in 24 hours, um, I scrolled down 200 comments, and not one of them, not a single one, was either in defense of the of the movie stars, or uh, attacking Ricky uh, Gervais. None of it. Every single one of the first two hundred that I looked at w said basically, "About time somebody told these stuck-up snobs to um, to get over themselves." Nobody cares what they has to think, what they have to think. So they used to have control of information, and they lost that. And they used to have control of 
the pop culture. Nobody really cares about that anymore. Everybody's doing all of these other things. Their political uh, philosophy is all about um, demonizing white people and rich people and old people, and and they've got three rich old white people for for their um, for their uh, their slate. All of it, all of it, is is coming apart for them. And what I've come to realize, and this is the point that comes back to Star Wars and why this whole Star Wars thing is so important. The, I've, I've just watched it happen in front of my eyes. It's been about a year and a half now. <clears throat> really started earlier than The Last Jedi, but The Last Jedi was, was the, the, the watershed. But think this over for a second. I maintain that things like Star Wars are a religion for post-Christian America, that, that people have religious feelings about these kind of things. Um, and certainly there's no question that Star Trek fills a philosophical void and an emotional void um, and provides many aspects of what a religion provides and also provides a code of behavior, somebody to look up to, and so on and so on and so on. Same for Star Wars, same for all the rest. So they've destroyed Star Wars, they've destroyed Star Trek, and they continue to destroy it with this latest thing, uh, this Picard thing, where the Federation is a bunch of xenophobic uh, haters because Donald Trump is a xenophobic hater, you see. So what they're going to do is they're going to turn the uh, United Federation of Planets into a totalitarian state in order to let us know that we live in a totalitarian state now that we've made um, a decision that they disagree with. So that's gone. Uh, a couple days ago, Doctor Who, which I've never been a fan of, nevertheless, it's been on for nearly 60 years now, has had a string of doctors. The 13th doctor was a woman, and now we find out that they've met uh, uh, the next doctor, apparently, who's not only a woman, she's a black woman, and they're rewriting the whole thing so that she was the original doctor. In, in terms, it, So in other words, the original Doctor Who was a black woman, and then all of the other incarnations over the last, you know, 60 years were just basically white men stealing her, um, you know, her identity, I suppose. Even though it's the same person regenerating, there you go. So, so here's the point. The reason that the, that the culture war is over and we win is because people would rather walk away from something that they deeply love than to stay with it and endure the left-wing message. If people were getting a social justice version of Star Wars and they were staying with Star Wars, we'd be in real serious trouble, but they don't. And think about that. The, the message, the social justice left-wing message is so obnoxious and so revolting to people that people will walk away from Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever that has been the center of their life and they'll walk away from it rather than stay and watch this happen to it. They, it's not Star Trek anymore. It's not Star Wars anymore. It's not Star Trek Discovery. It's not Star Trek. Everybody knows it. Same for Picard. And, uh, and The Last Jedi is not Luke Skywalker and all of it. it what the left has done is, the, in the manner of a parasite wasp, which you may know is the, um, the basis for the alien in the uh, alien uh, movie, Alien and Aliens with Ridley Scott and, and um, whatever his name is. Uh, the the parasite wasp will will find an, an animal. It'll sting it, and it will inject its eggs into that creature. Then the eggs grow inside the creature, and then they burst out. Um, and that's a pretty kind of a revolting way for a species to go through life. But that's what the parasite wasps do, and that's exactly what the left has done. You see, they've taken a philosophy that nobody wants, and in order to sell it, they have, they have put it inside of a host organism. So they've got this nasty little philosophy called progressivism. Nobody wants to buy it. Nobody wants to vote for it. So they can't come out and say that what it is is what it is. So they, so they try and sell it to you other ways. And when people don't want it in school and people run away from it in school and go into video games and movies to escape from this horrendous philosophy... Then they've decided that, like the parasite wasp, they're going to lay their eggs inside of things that people like. They're going to lay their eggs inside of Marvel comic universe. They're going to lay their eggs inside of Star Trek and Star Wars and Doctor Who and Ghostbusters and all of it. And then, and then 
the assumption was that we would all ingest this because we love it so much and we can't stop ingesting it. And as we ingested it, as we continued to watch these Star Wars and Star Trek things and love them the way we did, their belief that, that people are infinitely malleable, that there is no human nature, um, is, is simply a uh, big win for them because they figured, okay, so now the reason that people were conservatives was because the pop culture was conservative. All we have to do is make the pop culture progressive, and then people will be progressive. And it didn't work. It's not like it's not working or it may not work. It didn't work. It's over. People would rather walk away from Star Wars than listen to social justice Star Wars. And think about that. That's actually really, really, really important. Um, more to the point of Eric's question in terms of canon and so on, what, the reason why all of these things are so important, it, you know, a lot of people have blamed Disney for this and corporate greed, but it's not, it's not the corporate aspect. It's the, it's the, um, the political aspect. It's the fact that they're all social justice warriors, or at least they tell themselves they are. And they thought that they could inject this and change the culture. And instead of changing the culture, what it did, it was it destroyed the carriers. It destroyed um, uh, the, the, the franchises. And I want to talk just for a minute about this idea of a franchise. Uh, you know, what's the difference between um, Star Wars and, like, Ice Pirates? I mean, they're both uh, made in the 70s. They're both stories about... Uh, outer space, and they've got their own little universe, they've got their own spaceships, they've got uh, a story, lead characters, all of it. Why is Star Wars a thing and Ice Pirates not a thing? Or The Last Starfighter, or um, Silent Running, or uh, any number of these one uh, Event Horizon, which I thought was actually a pretty good movie. Why is there no Event Horizon franchise? Why? Why? The left thinks that these things are just interchangeable. They think that they write this horrendous, horrendous scripts for Picard, let's say. And they're not written by people who wrote the original series because those people had some brains and some talent. So they just figure, well, we'll just sit down and we use the same words that they used. And that's all the, that these idiots watching the show really want. So we'll chuck in some of the words and then we'll tell whatever stories we want to in order to raise their consciousness to our level. That's their attitude. So they said in, um, apparently in Picard, that the new uh, character, who, will, who is a diverse, young, strong woman, imagine our surprise, um, is actually uh, the daughter of Data that she was, now, now listen now, this is what they said. And I'm not going to the reason I'm going to go into the weeds with this is because it's important that you understand, I think, or it's important that I understand anyway. They said that this, that this human being, this girl, young woman, this is what they said, was they, they, that she was cloned from one of Data's positrons because Data had a positronic brain, and they were able to clone this human being from this robot's positron. Now that is an indication that whoever wrote that thinks that a positron is some kind of science fiction particle, just like any other particle, and as long as it's got something that sounds kind of cool like positron, people will buy it. A positron is an electron with a positive charge. It is, it, it is an exceedingly simple device. It's part, of an, it's part of an atom. It's not even a complete atom. There's the information that's encoded in these insanely um, complex molecules like DNA. DNA is composed of a series of atoms combining into molecules and then forming an incredibly complex structure. And even the, the building blocks of the DNA, the amino acids, they're all composed of, of several different, they're molecules that are made up of several different atoms. So they said, it's basically what they said was, we were able to clone a human because we managed to capture an electron from this android. Now, the reason that um, Star Trek is a thing and Lost in Space isn't uh, is because Star Trek, Star Trek appealed to people because 
because somebody cared enough so that smart people would get it. It's a self-serving kind of thing, but basically it's true. Star Trek, I'm just going to count the original series because, frankly, that's really all there is as far as I'm concerned. Star Trek, I don't want to start this with anybody, by the way, fine, whatever, whatever your Star Trek is, as long as it's not Discovery or any of that, you know, that nonsense. Star Trek basically said, we have a vision of the future, and the vision of the future is an optimistic vision of the future, which was quite a thing to say in the middle of the Cold War. The USS Enterprise is America. It's multiracial. It's, it's, um, it's a, a, a pluralistic society. And what Star Trek is, is America in space, just America going from planet to planet. And then the writers would build whatever moral message they want to into that planet and, or that culture. And so that's what you ended up with. But the people that wrote Star Trek understood that this world they're going to build has to be relatively believable and it has to be internally consistent which means that if you decide that the, that the Enterprise is going to move at warp factor one and that's the speed of light, you're going to have to go faster than that because whoever wrote warp factor one, probably Roddenberry in the beginning anyway, realized that if we're in the USS Enterprise and we leave Earth and we head out to Alpha Centauri at warp factor one, we'll be there in four and a half years. And obviously that wasn't going to work. So all of these pieces got put together. And the transporter, for example, wasn't magic. Uh, it's not something we can do quite yet today, although we're able to do some, we apparently have transported particles. But you could understand how the transporter could work someday, that this would be something that scanned your, basically disintegrated you, ionized you, scanned the position of all these atoms, recorded it, shot it down to the planet, and put it back together again. And, and it was consistent. And, and all of these things were consistent. And so people... You, you never heard Star Trek ever say, it'll take us light years to get there. Light year is a distance of, of a measurement of distance, not of time. And so basically, the people that wrote Star Trek knew enough about astronomy and enough about science to make it a believable universe. And when you throw in the optimism, it became a magnet for hundreds of millions of people. And I'm one of them. I mean, this whole office, is you can see the Gorn captain behind me. The Gorn captain didn't ever convince me that that was a real alien. It looked like a guy in a rubber suit, but the message that they were selling, I believed, and, and so I, be I believed it. When you, when you don't have anything like that level of intelligence or skill and you start saying things like, um, you know, uh, the guy took a, he took a full warp to the face and he's still, so he's still conscious. It's like, you, you have no idea what you're doing. You, you're, and, and you're destroying it. And, and because it's official, because it's canon, the destruction remains and it can't be undone. And this is the thing I kind of want to talk about, although the important thing is that... I th so let me, let me phrase this as succinctly as I can. The left has been working on penetrating the culture and the news media since there's been a left, which realistically is probably the early 60s in this country. Now... I don't think anybody can argue that confidence in the news media is higher now than it was in 1966. Certainly people are more skeptical of news and there are alternative means of delivering news by way of the internet. So the power of the news media relative to the 60s and 70s, the news media is far, far less powerful. 40 years of, of hectoring and lecturing and, and, and protesting and, and talking politics has meant that the respect that people used to have for the Academy Awards, I didn't miss that show for years and years and years. I haven't seen an Academy Awards show in 25 years now, 20 years. Certainly not since the beginning of the, of the Gulf uh, War. 2003 might have been the last time I, I saw um, a show. And when people started uh, talking politics, I gave up. So nobody can also say that, um, that movie stars have the power over people's imaginations that they used to. And Hollywood itself is no longer nearly as powerful as it used to be. A lot of people are looking at online content, uh, member, you know, um, you know, uh, viewer produced content, all of it. So that's weaker. Their political field is weaker. All of the things that they have are weaker, far weaker now. And that's telling me that 
the left has given this their best shot. In other words, the weapons that they're holding today are nothing like as, as sharp as the ones they were holding in the mid-60s. And no matter how much damage they've done, and God knows they've done enough of it, they didn't win. They could not convince us. They, they, even, even wrapping this social justice warriors, even wrapping it in Star Wars, didn't make it something that people would be willing to swallow. They would rather walk away from Star Wars than swallow this. That's, that's it. It's over. It's a win. If they can't, if they couldn't have done it with all of those tools as powerful as they were, which are getting weaker every day, if they couldn't do it during the last 40 years, then they couldn't do it, and they can't do it. It's over. They lose. And as I say in this uh, speech I'm going to put up, you know, the, the war in the Pacific uh, was won in six minutes on June 4th of 1942, after, after um, that the American attacks on the, on the Japanese fleet at Midway, the war was won. We'd won the war at that point. They never took the initiative again. We won the war, but the war wasn't over. And all of the serious killing happened after we'd won the war. That's, I think, indisputable. There's no question about the casualties. And there's no question that after Midway, the Japanese Navy never had any kind of initiative, any kind of a chance. It was over. For six minutes, it was over. Sorry, I keep making that mistake. It was won. In six minutes, the war was won. And it went on for another three years where most of the casualties happened before it was over. Same thing with Stalingrad and all the rest of this stuff. The wars are won in the first third of the war, and then it goes on for another two-thirds of the total time just so that more people could get killed, with the result being as inevitable as it always was. So the left has, has lost the culture war. They've lost, but it's not over. And, and the worst is coming. And as I mentioned in that speech, which is about an hour, where everybody can imagine what uh, civil unrest looks like when it comes from the bottom up, because everybody knows what riots look like. But what happens when the civil unrest comes from the top down? What happens when the people who are determined to smash things and, and, and destroy society are, are the billionaires and the, the tech giants and the movie stars and the, and the editors of, you know, newspapers? What happens then? So um, that's that. Now, as far as the canon thing goes for, uh, for Eric's question, uh, I think that I've seen several people, um, in fact, uh, Doomcock did a, did a video on just this one subject. They have, they have stolen and destroyed our mythology, and people want to take it back. So I don't think canon should be something that the, that the owners determine anymore. Um, I was going to say I was wrong about that, but that was before all of these things happened. The situation has changed. I don't know whether... Star Trek or Star Wars can ever be recovered, I think they might be able to, but certainly not by the people that own the copyrights. Because those people don't care and they don't know. They don't know and they don't care. They're just looking at it as a cash cow they can squeeze the last dollar out of and the last political leverage out of. They don't care. So if somebody were to say to me, is Star Trek dead? I would say no. But everything that happened starting with J.J. Abrams, is just fan fiction, the whole Kelvin timeline, fan fiction. And Star Trek lives in um, Axanar, and it lives in um, the continuing voyages and, and all of these other extraordinarily well-done um, fan films. And, uh, and the future of Star Wars is going to be in the hands of, of the fans. It's going to be in the hands of people who decide to make low-budget films that whether they're that that are that become canon because they're true to the source material. This is the thing. When when the owners of the copyrights can invert Star Wars to turn it into something not only different but inverse of what it was, then they, they, they've lost the um, they've lost the power in my opinion. Now Canon is what the fans determine, and um, when Axonar comes out, that's going to be canon as far as I'm concerned. I've never for a split second did I ever think that um, 
uh, that D Discovery was Star Trek. I never, it just wasn't. So anyway, we'll have to decide what we're going to do about that. Um, but certainly, the owners of the copyright have destroyed these incredibly valuable things. People that lo people loved that they loved. My entire office is filled with Star Trek stuff, uh, and that's only because it had such a profound effect on me. So anyway. I know I must be doing a great show because nobody in the comment section is, people are just having conversations about, you know, uh, rounds, magazines, and so it's always nice to know that you're, uh, that you're uh, commanding that kind of attention. On the other hand, it's been off to a slow start, so what can I tell you? Um, 